Well, today, new concerns on a shortage of drugs to treat cancer. Yeah, the most concerning part of these shortages, these medical shortages, is that there is generally, there aren't any alternatives to cancer drugs. ABC's chief medical correspondent, Dr. Jen Ashton, is here to talk much more about this. It's so alarming. It is so yeah. heartbreaking for yeah. patients and their families who are just hoping that that drug works. And yeah. now to hear that there's a shortage. Right, and not just in the world of oncology, but all kinds of medications and drugs. We've been talking about yes. this for a while. But yes, when you talk about cancer and therapeutics, remember now, this is based on dosage. It's based on frequency. It's based on cancer protocols. Protocols. It's based on side effects. And so it's not so easy just to say, well, carboplatin isn't available. We'll just use this. There are protocols based on your type of cancer mm -hmm. and they need to be followed. So this is reaching a what's called a critical shortage level. One oncologist saying that if something is not done, it will affect quote, every hospital in the Ugh. country. Um, and again, we're talking right now mainly about cancer drugs, but there are over 130 drugs currently listed by the FDA right now in short supply. Yeah, there so certainly this is a are. major problem. I'm mm -hmm. still unclear why there is a shortage, and then what can we do to curb that shortage? Well, mm -hmm. that's the million dollar question, and I think that in terms of specifically cancer therapeutics, but you can apply this to all types of drugs in short supply right now, a variety of issues. Number one, demand may be surging depending on what drug you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Supply chain issues, manufacturing dips. Okay. Remember that when drugs are in shortage, it, it generally causes costs of other medications to go up as well as the cost of that right. medication because now doctors and hospitals are scrambling for other alternatives and so this has a massive domino effect. Yeah, I've been dealing with this every month, not a cancer drug, but ADHD drugs. Right. That's and it's right. been very frustrating yep. and very, very Correct. hard to exactly. deal with. Yep. All right, we do want to switch gears because there's a big new study out about sudden infant death syndrome. Right. So talk about this and there might be a possible cause now? There may be and so what this is a small study but just published data looking at at SIDS and finding that there is a receptor that seems to be involved in some cases of SIDS in the brain that has to do with the breathing threshold or mm -hmm. the drive to breathe uh, when an infant's oxygen level goes down. Too early now to say whether this is consistent across all cases of SIDS and if it is, what can be done about it, mm -hmm. whether it can be tested for or whether there is a, a prevention or a treatment for it. Right now, the American Academy of Pediatrics is looking at this with encouragement that there mm -hmm. may be some uh, explanation for it. But remember, just anyone dealing with an infant, back to sleep is the word. Right. They are put to sleep on their backs on a firm surface with no toys or blankets Nothing. in the area. And again, sleeping in a bed, a human mattress is a risk as is breathing in secondhand smoke. Mm, I hope we nailed down all of this. But so, you know, for parents who are always filled with guilt and worry, yeah. you yeah. know, this is yeah. just something so that needs to be. So yeah. potentially this could shine some light on that.